This is a video record of our 2014 tour of Italy trip. This is part two. In this part, we spend more time in Sorrento, then we visit Capri, Assisi, Ferrara, and Venice. To recap, in the part one video, we had driven to the city of Sorrento on July 20th and taken advantage of an optional side trip to the little cliffside village of Positano. The next morning we woke up and were driven down to Sorrento Harbor to board a ferry that would take us to the island of Capri, the Beverly Hills of Italy. Okay, we're in at the port of Sorrento getting ready to go over to Capri. A little bit cloudy, but hopefully it's going to clear up. What do you got to say, dear? Hi, honey. Oh, we're in Sorrento. We're going on a on a boat trip. Yay! Just when we thought the ferry would never get there, I turned around and voila! There was our ferry. Forty-five minutes later, we were in Capri. Robin and I decided to take the optional cruise they offered around Capri. Here we have just boarded the boat for that trip. Robin and I had wanted to take the tour of the Blue Grotto on Capri, but time did not allow us to do that. So this stop on the Around Capri trip was the closest we got to that experience. At one point on this trip, we passed three huge rock formations sticking out of the ocean. They are called the Ferragaloni of Capri. They are the most photographed sites on Capri. The middle rock has a small hole which our captain took us through with only inches to spare. To Capri Harbor, we took the funiculare up the side of the mountain to the main shopping and eating areas of Capri.
we got to the top, the first thing we saw was this lemon and fruit stand. We both got a limoncello. Then we turned around to see Capri Harbor below. One of the places we enjoyed the most was called the Giardini Augusto, which means the Garden of Augustus. In this view, you can see one of the Ferraglioni, the three rock formations that we had seen earlier on the Around Capri boat trip. The bluish object just to the left of center is a stone bench that Robin especially liked. Here is a close-up of that bench. After we left the garden, we stopped and had lunch at this little restaurant. After we had lunch, we walked to the end of the road on this part of Capri. This upscale shop sold only lemon-related products. This is a great example of the fascination the Italians have with lemons. We took the funiculare back down to the harbor and walked around until it was time to return to Sorrento. Got the ferry and return to Sorrento. After we got back to Sorrento, we were taken to this furniture making factory. We were obliged to watch a demonstration of woodworking, then taken to a showroom, presumably so some of us would order furniture. To my knowledge, no one did. After this, we were given some time to walk down to the main part of Sorrento to shop. This walk should have taken about 20 minutes. Just after we started out, it started to rain. Then it started to rain harder, so we stopped, hoping the rain would lighten up. It didn't. Then it started to hail. Check it out, it's now hailing. We're still in Sorrento. By the time the rain stopped, it was too late to walk to the main part of Sorrento, so we returned to the furniture making factory where we met the rest of our tour group. Later we were all taken to dinner at this restaurant that TripAdvisor rates as the best in Sorrento. After dinner, they put on a show. Later, they allowed members of our tour to join in the festivities. At the end, Robin and I had another limoncello, and we were quite happy. On July 22nd, the morning after we visited Pompeii, Sorrento, and Capri, we left for our next stop, Assisi. The drive from Sorrento to Assisi took about five hours. On the way there, we drove by the outskirts of Naples and headed north. As we drove, we passed a field of sunflowers, the first of many we would see during our drives through Italy. When we arrived in Assisi, we went directly to the major tourist stop there, the Basilica of St. Francis. The 
basilica was built to honor St. Francis and serve as his burial place. It was started in 1228 and completed in 1253. This is the view with the basilica behind me, which you see is a typical Italian countryside. This is the front of the basilica with the same view of the valley below. The ancient town of Assisi is located in the hills behind the basilica. After taking a guided tour of the basilica, we had time to wander around Assisi. Later that afternoon, our tour group was driven to our hotel in the valley below the Assisi Hills. Just like our hotel in Rome, our Assisi Hotel used to be a convent and again, the rooms were Spartan, but very, very nice. The next morning was July 23rd. Before breakfast, Robin and I and a small number of our tour group walked to the Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels. The basilica was a very unique church. After St. Francis' death, they built this basilica around the tiny church used by St. Francis. Here you can see that tiny church. Later that morning, we all boarded our bus in Assisi and drove north to the medieval town of Ferrara. This was basically a two-hour rest stop. There were not many things to do there. We first visited Esti Castle, which was a fortress built in 1385 to protect the ruling family against the people. It was odd to see a fortress like this in the middle of the city. Here it is in the middle of the picture with a red dot. Here's a picture from ground level. Ferrara is not exactly a tourist mecca. There were no crowds at all. The only other important landmark was this, the Cathedral of San Giorgio, which was built in 1185. Soon it was almost time to leave, so we had lunch at... Yep, you guessed it. After lunch, I was anxious to get to Venice, so I tried to get a head start, but I didn't get very far. A few minutes later, we all got back on our bus and continued on to Venice, which turned out to be our favorite stop on the entire tour. So here is an aerial shot of Venice, which is a man-made island in the middle of a lagoon about a mile off the Italian coast, which is in the upper left corner of the picture. Our bus drove across the bridge connecting Venice to the mainland and dropped us off at the wharf inside the Red Circle. At this point, small groups of us boarded a flotilla of small boats. We sailed down the Grand Canal, which is shaped like a backwards S. Now here's an excerpt of the video I shot on our trip down the Grand Canal.
train station here. The entire trip took about a half an hour. We ended at St. Mark's Square in the center of Venice. After we disembarked from our boats, we walked directly to the place where small groups of us would ride on gondolas out to the Grand Canal and back. At this point I want to stop and explain the meaning of the fancy metalwork at the front of all gondolas. First are the six teeth or prongs pointing forward. These stand for the six districts of Venice. On some gondolas you will see three ornaments between the six prongs. These indicate the three main islands near Venice, Murano, Burano, and Torcello, shown here on the map. The tooth jutting out backwards symbolizes the island of Gaia Decca, shown in the foreground of this picture. The curved top signifies the doge's cap, the doge being the chief magistrate in Venice. The semicircular break between the curved top and the six teeth represents the Rialto Bridge, shown here. Here is the place we boarded our gondola, which is in the middle of the picture. It is just coming back from a trip through the canals. We boarded it after the returning passengers got off. Now here's the video I shot of our ride on a gondola. Wow, what an experience. Hey you I could only <laughs> you guys have got to like get into couples so I can take pictures of both of you. Oh, this is so fun. Did you having a good time? Oh, 
Thank you, Nora. Every day, I just want to know, I want this as my witness, is this going? That every day I thank you. Hello! <laughs> I, I agree, I agree. But we get up Coming out on you the Grand are. Canal. <laughs> Sound your horn. Beep, beep. <laughs> There's the Rialto. The belly. Gloria, what do you eat? Oh, what do you eat, Gloria? Perfecto. Ah, tío, tío, vete que pegue, hola. Get some into the sun shots. Get some what? Into the sun shots. Thank you. Do you want me to take a photo? Huh? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Stay together. I gotta get my husband out. Oh, You're away. Thank you. Uh, you want to get it? Uh, I don't want him to move, I think. Oh, my God. great time because there's hardly any boats out here. Except the cousin. Okay, it's a nice one. Oh, very this nice. one, yeah. this one, not the wind blowing this way, so Sorry. you try and You can't change the balance. Okay. It's very hard for me. There's a bridge coming. Bro, I'm proud to be around. This is like a deep one down. You're pretending you're together. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll be trying to do it this way. We don't need my brother. We're trying to see if that's close enough. Thank you.
This next clip is quite odd. This woman you will soon see on the left shore must have tripped just as I panned over to her. Oh my god. She actually panicked. After we finished our gondola ride, we walked a few feet to St. Mark's Square and spent some time there. After seeing St. Mark's Square, we passed by the Bridge of Size, the little bridge in the middle of the picture. It is called the Bridge of Size because people convicted of crimes in the building on the right used to stop in the middle of the bridge as they were being escorted to their fate, look out the windows, and sigh. By now it was time to leave St. Mark's Square behind and board the boat that would take us across the lagoon to our hotel on nearby Lido Island. The hotel was much fancier from the outside than it was in our room. <laughs> 